Hi everyone, I am Rajesh Kumar. I am having close to 16 plus years of experience in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. I have worked with more than 12 software organizations around the globe. I would like to introduce you all a DevOps School's a flagship certification program in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, this program will get started in the weekends. Uh, so get involved. Uh, please contact us on the phone number given on the screen. And in fact, you can email us on, on the contact at the rate of DevOps School. Let's forget about the Splunk. I want to know, I'll give you the Windows machine. And I will say, hey, can you please tell me how do you find out the logs where the password got changed or login got failed or something like that? How do you do that? Will something be available on the, uh, you know, will some event be, uh, One I don't know exactly. Yes, that. yes, event viewer. Correct, no? So go to the base. Splunk will give you, see, if you have knowledge, then Splunk will save your time. That's all. I repeat, Splunk will just save your time or any other tool actually. Fundamental should be inact. So you have to think in that way. You need to know Windows and Linux so well. You need to know app your application so well so that no one can teach you. Windows and Linux, you have to learn. Your application, the one which you're supporting in your project, you need to learn. No one teach you that one. You have to have that practice. Everyone will teach you Splunk, Neuralink, Data Dog, this, that, and all. But that that knowledge has to be there. So, for example, approach should be like password change. So I will think, okay, password change in Windows. So I'll see that uh, password change event ID for Windows. So event ID is a concept event viewer okay so every activities there's IDs for it and you need to search this event in the logs in the Splunk clear so any any logs the event ID is equal to 4724 that is a password change clear no need to think too much or login failure event ID failure and here this is the one are you understanding the approach hello yeah you yeah, got it uh, so build the approach and linux so search for this there's like login failure so this login failure will be in this file and this file and the pattern will be something like uh, uh, this file you can see that all the logs and look at the pattern actually I know the pattern in that Linux has a pattern based Windows has ID based actually right so yes uh, for these uh, when whatever you want to find out go back to the basics and see that what is your approach forget about the splunk let's say if you splunk is not there how do you do that and that thing you have to implement as a splunk to save time so when you look at the logs what are the common fields you have as other logs so some of the common fields you have are time source destination protocol and so on so these are the common fields you may have a more also depends on the applications so now the question is okay if i ask you to uh, analyze the logs then what are the best practices you'll follow by the way splunk will help you for this but let's say if you are outside of splunk let's say you are only using the linux command for it so what you will do you have a millions of log and you want to analyze it in line, linux command let's say grep grep command or set command so what you will do so for that first you have to detect the pattern and recognize it and then normalize the data so pattern detection means whether it's an error message debug message info message all these things has a certain pattern so you have to get that then normalize the data means normalize the data means uh, let's put it in this way you have a uh, you have a apache log now if you look at the format of apache log in from india they will have a different timestamp. 
if you look at the timestamp for Apache log uh, in USA, they'll have a different time zone, so different timestamp. So this is the same application log, which is from Apache, but the formats are different. So you have to normalize, you have to convert one timestamp to another one. That is, we call it normalization or transformation or, or uh, you know, you can see enrichment or something like that. Then you have to tag and classify. classify. Tag means uh, there is a field, there is, there will be field, but if you want to tag it, for example, there is a millions of application, think in this way. Uh, millions of logs is coming from one application. Okay, so I know that this is the XYZ application and these logs belong to this application. But I want to know this log from this application occurred in which server actually. How do you do that? So you have to tag that logs with some additional thing like server is equal to server 1, server is equal to server 2, server 3. So that the you have to tag that okay and after that correlation analysis correlation analysis means uh, let's put it in this way the user has hit the web server certain logs got created one user let's say rajesh has hit the web server log is created like that millions of users also hitting to that web server same time and then my i hit the web app server it got created some logs then I do some database operations in some transaction on the website and it create a log. Now, when I was logging the web server and uh, app server and database server, same time millions of other people were also logging. But the question is very simple, which is the my log in web server and which is the my log in app server and which is my log in database server and we have to link that correlation this three log one line of web server one line in app server this one and one line in database server these all these lines belong to rajesh so that way you can track the the what rajesh is doing on the application what changes he has done in database what application and then web so that is process is called correlation analysis and there is a fifth process which you have is a artificial ignorance. Artificial ignorance means uh, there are millions of lines you have from the network, from the server, from applications. You don't want all the logs to be studied, analyzed. Some of the logs you can ignore, for example, info logs, maybe. Okay, so that whenever you do the log analysis, these are the uh, five best practices you need to follow and most of the tools nowadays support these practices that means the tools will help you in terms of pattern and recogni recognitions normalization tagging and classification correlation analysis and artificial ignorance so these are the log analysis process collect the log data clean the data convert into structured format analyze of the data and often the result is what we are going to do so generate collect aggregate normalize alert store summarize make a conclusion and act on them so which are the log analysis tool is available so many splunk is the one the topic for the day so some of the things i'm ignoring it because too much of data which we have it this is the very simple architecture. I'm not complicating your understanding here. So how it works. So though the, the architecture can be complicated also and the full videos detail you can find in the LMS and uh, with a dedicated Splunk session also has happened. So there you can find the full detail. But we have to learn Splunk today and in today's session. So We'll stick to this basic uh, uh, workflow, basic architecture. So here we have one, one keyword which you see that is called search head. So what is a search head? Search head is just application. Using that you search just like a google.com. What you do? Search something. There's one box. 
and there you search for it. So like that, there is a search head. So search head, if you look at the arrow very carefully, then there is a one uh, component which is called indexer. Okay. So search head searches the indexer, which is the database. So we call it index. So basically we search the index, but the, how the index get the data logs basically. So forwarders, there is a universal forwarder and this forwarder you can install in the Linux, Windows, Mac, web forwarder, script forwarder, and a hell lot of types of forwarders are there. Okay. So these forwarders take the, collect the data from the different, different sources and stored in a indexer. So first we'll, we'll set up this, uh, uh, this architecture and then after that we'll start searching the techniques of search. Are you comfortable all of you? Yeah. So, but again, as I said, when you set up an enterprise one, it can be very complicated architecture. We'll, not complicated, I would say, if you understand, it's not complicated, but it's not that easy to begin. So you're starting, so go with this flow. Okay, so this is the something which we have to do that. And this is the workflow actually. So data input, we have it from the forwarder. Again, there's a different, different types of forwarder. Okay. Universal forwarder, heavy forwarder. I don't want to confuse you too much. So forwarder, you can say like an agent, simple way. Agent, which will collect the data and store the data in the database. But before storing the database, we have a parser source. Uh, if you remember that in VLK, we had a log stash, beats was acting like agent, and then Slastic search was a storage, and then Kivana as a search head. So if you if you look at the data dog also, it's the same thing. Architecture will be the same thing, but they call it a different, different name, so we get confused. Okay, so input is like agent, forwarder, parsers, indexing, and then search. Okay, so these are the things which we have. So here you see that data input is done by forwarder, parsers and indexing is done by indexers and searching is done by search. Head. These all component can be in a separate machine also. Okay. Forwarder can be separate, uh, has to be separate by, by the way, an enterprise has to be separate. For learning purpose, we will install in one box. Okay. So. Uh, I'm just skipping the something which is not required. So uh, in Splunk, we have a concept called index. So what is an index? So index, basically you can call them something like a database in the simple terminologies. Okay. So we can call them database. Database where the all the data is being stored. So you can create a multiple indexes, okay? But there's one index which is a default uh, set by Splunk and that name of the index is uh, main actually, okay? So again, this uh, uh, the Splunk enterprise index contains a variety of files uh, these files fall into this uh, main category. So one is the raw data, uh, and another one is the index that point to the raw data, and there's one more file T, SIDX files and stuff like that. So right now, don't get lost in this stuff. But yeah, you if you become ex, if you are focusing only on the Splunk, the an admin part of it, then you need to know actually. So you'll have a fields. So look at this here. This is the screenshot of Windows machine. This is the event viewer. So if you see that application log, security log, setup log, system log, forwarded logs and all. So here you have an event like a keyword is a field. Date and time is a field. Source is a field. Event ID you saw that. Field. Task category is a field. Log name, source. These all are field. So tags uh, i was discussing about the tagging and classification so yes uh, you can tag that 
uh, each logs with certain keyword if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching